Hi, this is Frederick from the channel Detroit Berlin, channel about music production, gear in general and modular synthesizers. I have these two ADDA converters, two devices I was sent by Amtec in Belgium. The RME ADI2 Pro and the ADI2 FS. These are ultra fidelity converters. They're not cheap, they're not audio interfaces, doesn't feature direct monitoring. If you want to convert a digital signal to an analog signal, most of the cheap converters, they don't sound that well. You got three devices, there's also an ADI2 DAC FS and that's only a digital to analog converter, so it doesn't have any inputs, no AD conversion, only DA conversion and that's very popular with audiophiles, audiophiles meaning people that really like high quality audio their hobby is listening to a high-end system with high-end equipment and they also need a high-end digital to analog converter and many of them they like the RME ADI to DAC because it's such a good and affordable in the range of high fidelity uh, equipment affordable DA converter so let's have a look at what we have here. The ADI2 FS is only a converter. It just converts the analog sound to a digital output. You route that output to your already existing audio interface. And it also has a digital to analog converter. And it also means that via ADAT, SPDIF or AES, you can route your audio digitally to this converter and then this converter will convert the digital audio into analog high quality audio. This one, the ADI2 Pro FSR, it can go up to 768 kilohertz AD slash DA conversion. It has a remote. It has a breakout cable which features the SPDIF and the AES in and outputs. Then it's got this quick guide, I would call it. And then it's got a manual. It's actually half of it is in German, half of it is in English because it's a German company. Pretty extensive manual and it's also a pretty complex device complex in that you can configure it in so many ways it has the display it also has a parametric eq in there different kinds of metering for the outgoing and the incoming channels it has a lot of features and also it has two headphone outputs and these are also of really high quality these can drive the most difficult headphones out there. So it is an amazing unit. It's not cheap. It retails for 1700 euros more or less. And this one, the simpler one, the ADI2 FS, it retails for 700 euros more or less. So the ADI2 Pro is more than twice as expensive and that is because yeah it has so many features it has a lot of power inside so let's first go over why i chose these two units to compare it to see which one suits my needs best you can find a lot about the adi2 pro fs but you can't find that much online about the adi2 FS and therefore I will kind of tell you the differences and where this could be a really good investment and where this could be a really good investment. So let's first start why I was interested in the ADI2 FS. 
Here is my desk where I master music. Mastering means that I finish the sound of a track that is mixed. And mastering means that it will get radio ready, streaming services ready, CD ready, etc. I have outboard equipment, I have two interfaces already, audio interfaces to send audio from and to the computer. From Universal Audio I have the Apollo and from SSL I've got the Big Six. Generally speaking, an analog to digital converter, it's easier to make than a digital to analog converter. Most of the conversion that will take the audio and recalculate it into the digital domain, that's of high quality in both Big Six and Universal Audio. If you send a signal, an analog signal, to the inputs, they get converted well, but then you're working inside of your digital audio workstation, then the audio gets sent to your monitoring. Therefore, you need the digital to analog conversion and if that's not of the highest quality, you're kind of working with... Let's make kind of a comparison. If you're taking pictures and you have glasses on that are dirty, you can't really make out if the picture is dirty or it's your glasses. You can't see clearly if your glasses are dirty. If your glasses are really blurry, you can't see sharp images, so you can't work with sharp images and know that they're as sharp as they really are. Same goes with music. If you have your hands over your ears, you can't hear clearly, then you don't for 100% know what you're doing. You're only as good as the feedback you get from your working environment, from your monitoring, so therefore, the quality of the outgoing audio is also of importance. But it gets even more important if you're using analog outboard and you're sending the audio from your audio interface. So there is conversion going on from digital to analog. Then you're sending it through analog devices and then you're recording that back into your audio interface. So there's two steps of conversion going on. That means if your conversion is not pristine, the recorded audio, the original audio that's already in the computer, that might be pristine because the AD conversion is pretty high-end. You're sending it to your speakers, you might not hear it clearly, but digitally it's still very clear and pristine. But not if you're actually sending it out with a not so pristine conversion. Your signal is polluted going back in and this is becoming your new recording. The quality drops and you can't even hear it. You're listening to your system and nothing changes. But the pristine quality that was there that you didn't hear because your digital analog conversion wasn't pristine and you're monitoring didn't give you the right feedback, you will never notice that you're actually degrading audio quality. With high-end conversion, you still keep the audio as pristine as possible going out and then back into the computer. Therefore, it's very important, especially when you're in mastering, and I offer mastering services. If you need some, please look in the description. I will put a link to Sound Better where you can hire me to master your music. So for audio mastering, it's really important to have the best conversion digital to analog because that's the place where you can really lose fidelity. Therefore, I was really interested in this one, the ADI 2FS, because I already have an audio interface that has ADAT out, SPDIF out and yeah, with this converter, I can just bypass the converters that are in the unit and I can use these converters instead. Still, 
the sound card will remain the Apollo in my case, but the conversion of two inputs and two outputs will be done by the RME ADI2 FS. And that's why I was really interested. And it's a very simple unit. You just connect it, it does its job. You can clock it internally and externally, and you can select which bit rates you have. 44.1 up to 192 kilohertz. This was the first one I connected and I could immediately hear the difference even when I was listening for a longer period and I switched back to the original outputs of the UAD Apollo. It really struck that this conversion is so much tighter and with the other conversion, it was like there was a blanket over my monitor speakers. It's an amazing difference. It kind of, yeah, tightened everything up and everything was more 3D, more depth, more realistic, I would say. So the conversion is really good, highly recommend it. Same with the ADI2 Pro FS. This conversion is the same. It has more things going on inside. It can go up to 768 kilohertz, but of course in music production I don't think that is actually that common to use those kind of extreme settings. I would say in my case that 768 it's not really a selling point but for audio files it might appeal. Of course it has so many other features that are extremely useful and only the display although pretty little I think with that monitoring I really like to check things in my mastering when I'm sending out it needs to sound good but also if I got this aid of metering and I can watch and see oh it is actually clipping or I've got a little bit more headroom that I can make use of then I think Think that is an extremely useful thing for room correction. If you want to correct your room a little bit, you can do it with this unit. I could do it already with my monitoring speakers, the Adam Audio S3Hs. Got some configuration options in this one. And what really appeals to me, that is that it has two headphone outputs. One is mirrored to the main outputs. So output one and two, but you can also use it in multi-channel mode, which means that you got output three and four, even up to eight outputs, including the digital outputs, of course, and six inputs, because you got two analog inputs and four digital inputs, and you got four analog outputs and four digital outputs. So what appealed to me in this unit where the two stereo analog outputs and that means that with my routing I can send the audio with output 1 and 2 left and right out to my mixing console where I insert my equipment then it goes back to the ADI2 Pro in this instance and then in the input I can monitor all the levels of the incoming signal on the display and I also can route the incoming audio in my computer to output 3 and 4 so I can monitor what is actually being recorded into this unit. And with the ADI2 FS I only have two analog outputs which send the signal out to my mixer to all my devices then it gets back into this unit in the input but there's not a second stereo output to monitor what is incoming into the input of the ADI2 FS. The only metering I have are six LEDs 
four green ones, then it turns to the fifth, which is orange, close to the danger zone, then it is a sixth one, it's the red one, and then you're overdriving. So I've got not that much of a metering here, and I also can't really monitor what's going in here. I like to hear what the finished product is sounding, and I can't do it with this one alone. I can do it with this one alone because it has two stereo outputs if you configure it this way. So this is a big advantage in my case. If I was just making music and recording but not routing out of the computer then back in, so I'm not looping and I need to monitor that loop. If I wasn't doing that I would definitely go for this one. With this one you got pristine converters for the outgoing signal so you can hear what you're doing really well. Even if you have like a CD player that you want pristine audio, take the digital output of that CD player, route it to this one and you get an improved sound. It's a really nice device and for the price I think you get such amazing converters. I can totally recommend this unit. For my purpose, the benefit of the monitoring, the benefit of the display where I can look at the metering and monitor that, this one has such a big plus that I'm really tempted to go for this one. Of course, in case you don't have any audio interface, you could go for this one just for the outgoing audio, even if you're just listening to music, you want a good converter. This one I think is the one to get. If you have vinyl collection that you want to digitize, this has the input so you can record signal in really high quality. So this one in my opinion is actually even better than the ADI2 DAC because that one only has those outputs. It does have RCA outputs. This one has quarter inch jacks and of course they all have these balanced XLR outputs. Let's look at the back. You got the ADAT or the SPDIF in and out optical you got a breakout cable, this one with the AES and the SPDIF. Then you got USB to connect it to your computer. Don't need another audio interface if you just want to connect it to your computer to use it as you know, the converter for your computer audio. With this one, you already need to have an audio interface with ADAT or SPDIF or AES. If your computer has ADAT output, you could also use this. Just go for this one. If you're a mastering engineer and you want something for mastering, I would say might go for that one. Also if you want to be able to equalize your room so that if there are frequencies that are building up in your room, then you can try to adjust it via the parametric EQ. So that's good for room correction. I think it's also a very pretty unit, but of course it's not cheap. I really would recommend both of these units, but like I said, each one has its own purpose. This one is way cheaper. It's only an ADDA converter of really good quality. Just go for this one if you have an audio interface with the right connections. If you have an audio interface like the Big 6 from SSL, it doesn't have any optical digital outputs or inputs. If you want to combine it, you need the ADI2 Pro. If you have like an Apollo and you just want the pristine conversion, I would say just go with the ADI2 FS. It might be a little bit more limited than the other one, but this one is also way cheaper and yeah, I think that is a really good choice. If you're interested in buying one of these devices, I also got affiliate links 
in the description. If you follow those links and you buy something, even something else, then a small percentage will go to the channel and that keeps me running the channel. And yeah, I can do a lot more videos about yeah, music related stuff. So that would be very kind of you. So I would really like to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm doing a series about mastering. I'm also going to discuss all this equipment from EQs, tube EQs to very tube compressors to VCA compressors to saturators and yeah everything that you can use in mastering. Also have a page on soundbetter.com so if you need some songs to be mastered please go over there hit me up write me a message and I will come back to you. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.